Okay, this truck is going to be showing some things that are kind of a takeoff on the car animation one tutorial. In car animation one, you learn about how to keep the car on a path and how to make the wheels turn and how to uh, make the body lean as it goes around corners. And the truck's doing all that, but it's also hitting an object. And so I want to show how you can hit an object and make it move in a realistic way. So I'll start by something. Uh, I'm going to grab this box that I'm on, and I'm just going to change something about it. I'm going to freeze the box so I don't accidentally move the plane I'm working on. And I'll say, don't show frozen contents in gray. There, good. And so now I can concentrate on just moving things around. And so, see all the keyframes that make this box move? I'm going to delete those. So we're starting, in a sense, from scratch. And I want to go to the top viewport so we can see what we're doing. And probably the best view for this type of action. And right here, I want to move this box. So I've got an ad, I've got to add a keyframe right here. So this thing locks down until this point. So uh, in frame 31, I'm going to turn on auto key. I'm, I've got the box selected, and I'm going to do a little bit of a move, and then undo it, and I'm going to do a little bit of a rotation. Five degrees and then come back. So what I've done was is I've caused the box to be locked down. I've nudged it in in its in space and in rotation. So if I do a further animation on this after frame 31, it's going to animate from that frame. If I wasn't to have done that nudge just now, the animation would have started at frame zero, and so you'd see the car or the truck approaching and this thing already turning and moving out of the way, which is pretty unrealistic. So now at frame 32, the box has to get out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and rotate it a little bit because there's going to be a lot of push from the truck coming on that edge, on that corner of the box. Plus, we need to move it away. And it's probably going to get pushed a little bit like this. So let's just see how that works. And we'll scrub and look. That's not too bad. And let's just go to the next frame. What would happen here? Do a little bit more of that. A little bit more of the spin. And it would have to probably move this way. And you just got to use your own log logic when you're figuring this out. And what's really nice with this truck movement is we can hit it twice. If we can get this thing out of the way just right on the first pass, we can bump it again with the tail of the truck. So I think that really makes for a cool animation. So let's say right here, give it a little bit more spin and a little bit more push out of the way. See, is that looking right? There's a little bit of intersection. You see physically that really couldn't happen, could it? That truck can't go through the box, so you got to watch out for those. Let's move it a little bit more. And we've still got that going on. It's going right into the tire. If if the box had a little bit of an angle to it, I could see that. But right now, it's not. It's just not feasible that the tire and the box would intersect. So you've got to move them until they don't intersect. Now here we get to move it again. And I would say right about there is a good place. So we can spin it a little bit more. And push it up away a little bit. Now it's going to be more of a upwards movement. And right there we can knock it again, I think. And of course it's going to have a little momentum to its own turn. But what I'd like to do is is this little movement here, I don't want it to, uh, that little movement right in there I don't like too much. And I'll tell you one thing we can do to make this a little easier to handle. You can see that some of these keyframes are kind of hard to see. So you can use your control and alt key on your keyboard and then your right, right mouse button to spread those out. And I'll do that right now.
Okay, you can see how much easier it is to see those red and green keys. Red for move and green for rotate. And here what I think I'm going to do is take this keyframe and uh, just going to do a shift and drag and copy that. So now I've copied a keyframe, so it's really stopped. The box stops for a second, and now it keeps going. Do you see what I did? Now it looks white right now, but if I click anywhere on the timeline, you'll see that it's, it's still a red and green key. It's a, it's a move and a rotate key at the same place. I think that works pretty good. Okay, so let's see how it looks like in the other view. I'll turn off auto key for a second. You know, to check the other views, of course. Yeah, that's probably not as good as it was the first time, but of course you got to fine tune these things, and it takes a little bit of time. Now we can go in a little further. Actually, I'm probably running out of time here, so um, we'll hit the next piece of this in the next video.